What's going on, everybody? Welcome to my 2024 Miami Dolphins mock draft 3.0. So if you've been there with me for the first one I did back in January, the other one I knocked out about a month ago, and this one is kind of, even though free agency isn't quite over, it's starting to wrap up here, slow down a little bit. Yeah, I got all things considered. I uh, know I don't have a receiver for my first pick, but stay to the end because I'm going to give a firm description on why I chose everybody that I chose. And if Miami Dolphins stick to a similar formula like this, I believe we'll be very successful years down the road. Now, I will say before quick disclaimer, comment below. And before we even had free agency, I was like, man, we're going to win like eight games this year. But yeah, it's kind of went up to 10 games. And whether you like it or not, we're, we're still rebuilding, you know, but we got some guys who are going to fill in for the next one to two years. And I'll make this transition really good into next year, 2025. We're not going to cover that just yet, though, uh, where, hey, we got a lot more cap room and, hey, it's going to be back to kind of win now mode. But I still think we can make some ruckus. So let's jump into it with my first pick off the board. It's going to be a defensive tackle now. Uh, I'll be real with you guys. I was ready to get a Christian Wilkins jersey had we resigned him. That did not happen. But who knows? That may change. And I may end up getting a Newton defensive tackle coming out of Illinois. Now, this dude is a dog, man. Check this out. 26 solo tackles, uh, seven and a half sacks, one forced fumble. Um, I'm a fan of this guy. And he even had a, a fumble recovery. And then 52 total tackles. That's insane for a defensive tackle. This dude is a three-year starter. He even started his freshman year. So he's, you know, we got about four years of college football tape on the D1 level. Um, arguably, in my opinion, he's probably the best defensive tackle in this whole draft. If not, you got to put him in the top two conversation. I like the guy from Texas a lot too, but I think he may slide a little bit out of the first round. Um, but I like him a lot, man. Here's some things what scouts have to say about Newton, and then we're going to take and move on. Uh, and that's going to be a, he has excellent natural leverage and all encompassing alignment versatility, explosive high energy athlete who can invade gaps with his uh, spare mobility and zeal. Now, you watch the tape on this guy, you're going to also see that as well, too. Uh, hyper elite torso flexibility that does allow him to take and uh, peel and uh, seep away through his anchors. Uh, also, uh, he has ability to bend and rush from the five and seven technique using high end angle uh, flexion and all that good stuff. So uses his hands as a lot too. Uh, packs impressive strength in his frame. It can stack and shred and run defense. And then his weakness, he does uh, lacks elite mass and can be more easily gathered by double teams and combo blocks. Who gives a damn? We got dope edge rushers in Miami. <laughs> and let me say, I like the guy that we got from Dallas. I like the guy that we got from Dallas. Um, I would say he's a middle of the pack defensive tackle. Um, I don't think it's a guy we're going to have for like a super long time, but for someone to fill in for the next two years. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely, man. And this is, he's, in my opinion, he's a guy who, who can start right away. He did great things for Dallas. Um, so yeah, I like the pickup from Dallas, but I think Jerzon knew and having him there as a rookie, getting him in rotation, this guy can develop into an absolute beast. Okay. Uh, moving on to my next pick. Now guys, uh, there's been a lot of a lot of debate on who we should get with our first two picks. There's been a lot of debate. You should get a receiver, man, the first pick. Don't worry. I got a receiver who we're going to cover, and I have a lot of information. I actually know him personally, so we're, we're going to get into all that. But let's talk about Chris Abrams Drain. Now, please forgive me if I said his uh, last name correct incorrectly. Y'all, check this out. Very productive cornerback, and I'll say that lightly. Coming off of a 2022 campaign, he actually, in 22 he actually amassed 14 pass deflections. He's five foot 11, 179 pounds, a bit of a lightweight, but he does pack a punch, man. Big time twitchy uh, player. Uh, statistically, I like him a lot. I am a huge fan of this young man. This dude, uh, he gets he gets the job done. Interceptions, he got you covered. Pass deflections, he got you covered. I'm a fan. I am a huge Chris Abrams drain fan. Okay. Looking at his stats and what he brings, he tested pretty good at the combine as well too. So uh, this is a young man who is going to, he tests well, what he puts out on film is great as well too. And I want really good DBs. I don't want us to be in a situation like the bills game last year, where we got people playing the wrong position or, Oh, someone's injured. So we have someone fill in. And like, I, I don't, I don't want our worst guy to be Eli Apple. I don't. 
<laughs> I want us to have like a no fly zone, man, like what Denver had years ago. Right. Um, you know, I, I want us to have a feared secondary. OK, so, yeah, I, I got a DB with my second pick on the draft, even though I like the guy that we took in it was Kendall Fuller. I believe it is. I like him a lot. He is great. However, uh, you know, he's at the end of his career. He's into his eight year career. You know, how long is this going to last? We got him for what? The next two years, I believe it is two, three years. I'm happy with the pickup, but again, we're in rebuild mode. It's a soft R. It's not a hard R, but it's a bad, bad analogy. You guys get what I'm saying, though. Uh, moving on to the next pick, wide receiver. This guy will make you guys very happy. Jalen Coker coming out of Holy Cross. Guys, he had, I believe it was 15 touchdowns. His uh, senior year tied for first place for most receiving touchdowns. Now, he goes over to the Hula Bowl crushes it at the hula bowl balls out unfortunately he did he get got a little banged up during the east west shrine but he got selected to that but even in practice guys he was mossing people in the end zone man i think the number one receiver for that bowl game was joshua cephas that's another guy came very close to us getting utsa standout but jalen coker if you guys watch uh steven smith follow him on twitter Every year he breaks down these wide receivers and Jalen Coker is no exception. He broke down Jalen Coker's tape and took and called him the Tim Duncan of wide receivers. What? How, how was that? Tim Duncan played basketball. What what are you talking about? Well, when he jumps up in the air, his jump ball is crazy. And if you go on his Instagram, you see him doing you, you see him taking doing moves similar to Spider-Man in the end zone, man. They, they call him Spider-Man. He has a really cool nickname uh, coming out of a small school, but a big school impact is what he takes and he brings. So check out my interview, too. I've had Jalen on the show. I know him personally. He's a great guy, man. Great head on his shoulders. Comes from a great family and just a guy overall who's going to be a, a great contributor to the Miami Dolphins. I love Jalen Waddle. I love Tyreek Hill. But who's to say that Tyreek Hill don't go after this year? Who's to say, uh, you know, Jalen Waddle gets injured halfway through the season. You know, let's say he starts dropping balls again. We can see him get benched. I mean, we're, there are some issues with our top two guys. You know, I don't know. I love what we have. I love our receiver core, but I'm not crazy about our wide receiver three and four and us bringing back people who, you know, chosen Anderson or whatever. I'm, I'm not happy about that. So, look, man, people need to feel uncomfortable because we're trying to win a Super Bowl. and We're not here for feelings. I know um, Boy Genius himself loves that. He loves uh, family, da, da, da. But we got to win some games. And then they got, they got to go a lot further than just making it to the wild card. But Jalen Coker is my guy, dude. He could he could potentially grow into wide receiver one or wide receiver two one day. And he is going to be a firm wide receiver three for us. He could play in the slot. He could play on the outside. He could play all over. This guy is amazing. So watch his tape. Dude is dude is a baller. Uh, moving on to my next pick, okay, is a guy by the name of Trent Jones. Now, I got to say about Trent Jones, he was not an all-year starter for Michigan. Do six foot four, light on his feet, 305 pounds, now, guys, we have two starting tackles, but let's be real. Let's be real. Trent Jones is a development piece that could potentially become an NFL starter full time. You know, he could be tackle left tackle number one. OK, uh, we, we got Austin Jackson on one end and we got Teron Armstead. Shout out to Teron Armstead, friend of the show, had him on uh, a few months back. But Teron Armstead is likely this is his last year with the Miami Dolphins, right? And also he's had, though he looks great. You see Toronto Armstead, he's, he's shedding weight. He's doing all kinds of boxing workouts. He looks fantastic. He looks in great shape. However, who's to say he won't get injured again. He plays so great. He just can't stay healthy and it's frustrating as hell. It really is. So I say, man, let's start getting ready now to get a tackle in there. Just to get, get him and get him into rotation, man. What makes, what, what I like Trent Jones, here's the thing. Uh, if you guys watch any Michigan football, college football, anything like that, this is what I like about him, man. Um, so he he ran a 5.1 or 5.17 in his uh, 40 yard dash. So he had, he had a, a great speed. 5.1. That's 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 really, really good. He did very well. Very impressive. Caught a lot of scouts attention. You know, he's definitely going to be no UDFA. I'll tell you that. But he made his first career start in uh, 2022. And it was a home opener uh, versus Colorado State. OK, uh, so that was last uh, year before last. And then and then week 13 of the 2023 season, when Zach Zinter went down with an ankle injury versus Ohio State, he took over playing right tackle. And it was like this guy was supposed to be start. That's the thing about Michigan. They have so many offensive linemen. 
And and I know Connor Jones, who's going to his junior year now, he'll probably be a draft pick in a year or two. But I know people there. I know people on that team, on that offensive line who are there. And it's the, the, the commitment to having the best people. Sometimes it's a rotational thing in a place like Michigan. You could have a backup offensive lineman still get drafted. <laughs> Anywho, I say that to say this. I like Trent Jones. Watch the tape. He is a mauler. He is quick on his feet. And for him to take a slide, and this is a very deep offensive line draft, for him to take a slide, I think it would be a great pickup. Some call this a reach. Some people say a slide. I think 184 is just right for him. Uh, moving on, another Michigan guy, Drake Nugent, six foot one, 298 pounds. There's a lot of tape on this guy. And a lot of people have a problem with the guy that we took and we just got from Tennessee. They say he's a great run blocker. Fantastic. He's running down the field, knocking the next guy out. But pass blocking, not so much. But he can also play guard as well, too. And he's pretty good at that. So I want to see what the Campbell said, because nothing has really quite been announced yet. You guys know the Miami Dolphins. There's going to be people taking and bouncing around. They're going to be playing different different places, right? Um, what I like about Drake, New, uh, excuse me, Drake Nugent, Drizzy Drake Nugent, uh, this dude is a baller, man. He started all 15 games at center to earn his first varsity letter in Michigan. Uh, he was a Remington Trophy finalist. So this guy, he's had accolades for playing this position, uh, which is something I like. Uh, prior to Michigan, uh, he appeared in uh, 27 games, started at 24 games uh, over at Stanford. So, And then, of course, his, his final year playing college football, he was in Michigan, in which he was a starter throughout the year. So uh, you guys know anything about Michigan? They have one of the best offensive lines in all of college football. So, guys, if we can get a steal in round five or six, I am not complaining. I am not complaining, okay? The Dolphins, they just love going crazy in free agency, y'all. This happens every year. But this year's draft, man, there's a lot of good offensive linemen. And if Drake Nugent is there at 198 or even 184, you swap those, it's going to be great. Uh, last pick of the night I want to take and talk about is a gentleman by the name of Cam Allen. Now, Cam Allen, guys, he's getting a lot of interviews from a lot of NFL teams. Chiefs, uh, Chiefs, Chargers, Colts, um, those those are the, the main teams. He went off on his pro day. Now, he's number uh, two all time in tackles for a um, for for a safety and then number four all time in tackles in Purdue history for the whole school. You know, the, this dude is is amazing. He watched his tape, man. He had a great 40 time. He tested through the freaking roof. Um, I used to think this guy was a UDFA. Now I'm thinking he's a round six, round seven guy. He packed on about 20 pounds and he's still running at <laughs> an insane 15, 20 pounds around there at the same speed. Uh, I had Cam Allen on this show, so watch that interview as well, too. If you guys know me, I do exclusive draft interviews so with some of these guys and hope to even have some more of these guys on the show. But Cam Allen is a guy. He could play uh, quarterback. He could play safety. He can play all over in the backfield. That's what I love about this guy. Uh, Miami Dolphins, we find ourselves in injury trouble. Brian Flores would love this because he could play in multiple positions. <laughs> but this is, this is a safety that can line up in the nickel. He could go man to man. He you put him in the dime package. You put him all different types of packages. That's what I like this guy a lot. And honestly, don't be surprised if he goes all the way up to round five. And I know, I know, we got our safeties. We're pretty much lined up. We get, we got Poyer, we got Holland. Um, it's another guy we signed. Name is skipping me. Um, but Poyer is here for one year. So again, I'm thinking about the future. There's some depth guys, and there's some guys who could start day one. Just to recap, Johnny Newton, that's a day one starter. Chris Abrams Drain, day one starter. Jalen Coker, day one starter. And then the rest of the guys in there, they're they're rotational guys. They're people that you can grow with. Pick 184, 198, 241. Those are all guys that I'm thinking two years, three years from now. What do they look like when they're fully developed? So comment below. I want you guys to let me know what you guys thought about this mock draft. Do you love it? Do you hate it? This is Dolphins Mock Draft 3.0 from the Touchdown with Doug Smith. Um, Y'all see? I'm a diehard Miami Dolphins fan, but I do content for all. Like I have a, a Pittsburgh Steelers mock draft about to come out. You know what I mean? And uh, I do all kinds of cool stuff. So hit that subscribe button. I try to keep you guys entertained as possible. I, I do the show pretty much solo, dolo, bad friends come on from time to time. But I hope you guys have a blessed and awesome night. I'm ready for this NFL draft, y'all. It's going to be tough to sleep until then. But until next time, 
catch you next time on the touchdown with doug smith thank you for watching another episode of the touchdown with doug smith where we have exclusive nfl content and exclusive nfl interviews be sure to hit that like and that subscribe button follow us on social media see you on the next one